Okay, hello everybody. Um, a week ago I picked up a cheap second-hand TGB 202 Classic 50cc two-stroke scooter, uh, which I wanted just for a run around the town. Uh, now I've had scooters in the past uh, when I lived further away that I used for, you know, fairly long distance commuting. So, um, but now it was time just for a, a play around the town because I've not had one for a few years. So I took it to work on and off last week, which is only a couple of miles up the road. Um, now a couple of days I couldn't get it to start at all. And on the three days it did start, it runs really well when it gets going. It's a nippy wee thing. Um, but uh, the when you stop at traffic lights, the idle will die right off and the engine will stall. Now, having been on a few of the scooter forums I use, the, the overriding view of the people that know more than I do, which is probably most of them, uh, is that we have a carburetor that needs cleaned out, which makes sense because it's it's been lying a while the bike, it's probably not in the, the best condition underneath. So today, what we're going to try and do is take the carburetor off, clean it, clean up generally around the whole engine area. Now, I have never done anything like this before. The scooters I've had in the past have always been usually four strokes, usually Hondas or Yamahas, which frankly just you know, unless you're very unlucky, you just don't go wrong. Um, and, you know, they've been serviced and they get the appropriate garages. So this is a bit of a leap in the dark, but there didn't see much point in taking the bike to a garage when it was cheap anyway and spending, what, 100, 150 quid for something to do what I might be able to do myself. Now, if I can't do it, it's going to have to go to the garage anyway, so I've not really lost anything. So what we've done uh, is we've got carburetor cleaner from Halfords. Muckoff motorcycle degreaser. This was a bit expensive in some solutions, but it does say it's safe on all components, so that reassured me a bit. So I don't want anything dissolving that shouldn't be. Um, we have a new spark plug and a tool for fitting that because I want to have a look and see what state the spark plug's in. Uh, trusty old WD 40. I also got some of this Silcoding Pro FST. Now I used to use this a lot on my scooters and it was great stuff. Um, because here in Scotland, the weather can be cold, which probably won't be a surprise to any of you. Uh, this really helps with any cold starting problems. It treats the engine and looks after the engine. Um, and the best scooter I had was Honda Dillon 125, which did 15,000 miles before some guy in a 4x4 decided to hit it. Um, with me on it, unfortunately. And, and it never missed a beat. And this was always added to the engine, so I've always had a lot of faith in this stuff. So you just add a very small amount every time you fill up the tank and it, it just keeps the engine purring along, which once we've cleaned the carburetor should help, you know, maintain a good running order. Uh, now, like I say, this is a, a, a leap in the dark. I've never removed a carburetor or done anything like this in my life. I've watched some videos on YouTube, so I've got a feeling I know what I'm doing. Um, so what I'm going to do is just record it as we go along. If I get to a point I get stuck or I don't know what I'm doing, then I'll just stop. Uh, but I shall keep you updated as we go along. So now we're off out to have a look at the bike. Okay, so we have here TGB Classic 202 scooter. Low mileage. Reasonably good condition. Now the exhaust when I got it was rusted a lot, so I've sanded all that off, put black heat resistant paint on. wheels were rusty too, they've all been cleaned and repainted. So, there's a bit of panel damage there, but that's minor, so we're not going to worry about that for the time being. So, first up, first up to take the tops, the internal seat off which is two screws here and two screws down there. Easy bit. Like okay, bolts out. So all you do then is you just lift it out. And that's that, which gives us access to the engine. And there's your carburetor, which we want to take out. As you can see, it's a bit, a bit messy in here. So we're going to try and clean this out. What I'm going to try and do first is take the side panels off. So we're going to have to get rid of the back box carrier. 
So that's the next thing we try and do. Okay, um, screws everywhere as usual with these things, but found them all. The cover's off. I can't work out how to remove the the key thing that opens the, the back seat, so I've just left it sitting there so we get a final look at what's going on in here. Pretty messy. It's a good clean out. So that's the next part of the plan. Right, now before we start removing the carburetor, what I've done is I've put, I don't know if you can see those, numbers on the various leads. So when it comes to putting it back again, hopefully it goes back the right way. There's one very small, uh, and that's the main jet tube down there. I've left that because that's the smallest, so that's obvious. Um, right, and now we're going to try and remove the carburetor. Fingers crossed. Okay. Right, well, carburetor is out, and there it is. Actually, pretty straightforward. The hardest part was getting out of the, the air tube here, which we had to prise a bit. That was stuck solid. Apart from that, we're out. So, this could be the cause of the problem. To get the float ball off while well, I've spilled petrol everywhere, and have a look at it. So now we're going to clean up a bit in here. This um, fuel pump needs replaced. I've ordered another one of those and the fuel cable. They've not arrived yet, so we'll, we'll come back to that one before we connect everything back up again. Everything else is there, the marked cables, so fingers crossed it all goes back. But right now we're going to start off, uh, we're going to soak this in a bowl and get this cleaned up under here. So far, right, so good. four screws at the bottom of the carburetor and the float bolt, so taking those off. Now, aha, and this now comes apart like so. Hmm, interesting stuff. Right, we're going to get that covered in carb cleaner now and see if we can get something working again here. Okay, and then we've got to try and put some of it back together again, which should be fun. Right, so we're about an hour on. Spent some time with the the muck off, giving everything a good clean. I mean, it's not perfect because there's obviously going to be bits of rust in that, but I think it's looking better than it was. Now the carburetor we fired all that through the fired that into the jets. It's soaking. Keep doing it. I'm just going to know in any hurry to finish doing this because I want it nice and clean because I don't particularly want to be tearing this apart again in the near future. So we're going to play around with that for a while longer and uh, hopefully it'll all go back together again. Right, well the carburetor has been soaked, the spray has been blown through every jet and the hole I can find. Um, they say you should put uh, compressed air through it. Now I don't have any access to compressed air but one tip we got on the internet was take one of these bag ties or plant ties, strip the wire back, very gently poke that through just to make sure everything's clear and then run some more cleaner through it. The worst bit again is attaching it to this air filter at the bottom which is which is a bit of a nightmare but anyway I think it's in and now we can reattach. Um, everything else looks as clean as it's going to get I think. So, let's see what this goes. Okay, that I think is everything reconnected the way it should. Now I'm not going to run this at all today, it'll do any of it because that fuel filter in there is absolutely totally and rusty and that's getting replaced. I've got a little bit of WD-40 over the electrics in case any water put in, it's cleaner. Um, so now just to put the covers back on, he says, just put the covers back on. Yeah, and we'll see how that goes. All in all, considering I've never seen the carburetor or removed a carburetor or had anything to do with engines in my life, that wasn't too tricky. Well, that was relatively painless. Back on reasonably easy. Everything seems secure. Um, now we just wait for next week, get the fuel pump, possibly some new line for the fuel, and then we'll start it up and see if it's made any difference. Okay, time to wash up now.